Good morning. Welcome to the Carla Marie and Anthony show as we unintentionally match this morning. Right? It's kind oh. of kind of matching a little bit. We've got our new our newest order of our own stuff, which is kind of weird to say. We get the, um, we get the last order when all the orders go out. Yeah, but after yeah, after everything is said and done, like the last day of um orders being live, we get to go through and say, "All right, is there anything else that we want to add that we didn't get when we took pictures of everything?" Yeah. And because this green hoodie wasn't available, I think this is the only thing that I added. You know, it's crazy. Hoodie. It looks so different on camera, on like on the screen that everyone sees. Like on our camera, it looks that it looks different here to me. Yeah, it a looks, little bit. Um, I don't know what I was going to say. <laughs> Just wanted to say, um, good morning. Let's see. We've got Iroatin. Subscribed with Prime for 10 months. Thank you very much cool. for that. Appreciate it. I've never seen that name before. Yeah, Jen and Lisa. Oh, my God. I see them in the chat. What are you? Why are you struggling so much today? Uh, oh, you put your... Because you put your headphones uh, through your necklace. Well, just run it the other way. No, what do you I help? did, and it got caught. It's not caught. Just go the other way. It's very easy. No, no, no. It keeps getting caught, and I'm scared to break it. Okay, now you're good. See? There you go. Look at that, Carla Marie. What a big girl. Oh. You could do it yourself. Bam, level five completed. Brian from Post uh, Brian from Post Falls, Idaho. Thank you very much for that subscription with Prime, taking us over the edge there. So, Carla Marie, what are we drinking today? Oh, uh, those same things we've been drinking all week. <laughs> <laughs> Did you take like funny pills this morning? <laughs> I'm so funny, I know. Uh, no, I don't. I forget what it's called. I don't have the paper from Seattle Cocktail Club. It's a frozen drink, though. You have one job as we prep for every every show is to make sure that we have our drinks ready to go. It is a a pineapple look. Well, where'd you put the paper? Oh, I don't know. I didn't take it. Ooh, um, just a heads up, if since we're talking about Seattle Cocktail Club, I am doing another techniques class with them. Okay. Which means that I will be, you'll be able to watch, it's free, and you'll be able to just watch and, un, like, learn how to make drinks. Okay. Um, Shout out to Dave C 84 for the thousand bits. Thank you very much for that. I just saw that come through. Oh, I should remember. This is a Bing Bang? Big Bang? No, that was, that was, it's not updated. I really am. You are struggling today, huh? And you were up early. Heather on Long Island. Uh, Heather on Long Island with another thousand bits. I'm just seeing all of these right now. And Daisy from Primeville with her subscription with Prime. Yay! Let's call her Primeville. Right? No, Amazon should open an office there and call it Prime. That, that'd be actually pretty good. Okay, so. I bet you the town would sell the name for the right price. I'd sell anything for the right yeah. price. Amazon's got, and Amazon can pay it. Oh my God, I just felt the cold air coming out of this thing. Well, that's a brain freeze waiting. Like, what if Amazon wanted to come in to North Arlington and it was like North Amazon? I don't know. Honestly, listen, that town confuses me sometimes. North Arlington? Why is that? Because the. You know, they're all, they all probably like, there's no one in that town that cares a single dot about sustainability okay. um, or like being good to the planet, except my dad. He recycles. Okay. Um, But I feel like they'd be like, all of a sudden they'd be like, oh, capitalism when they literally do not care. We don't want what? Amazon here. Meh. But like right now. They don't like, like capitalism? I said when that would happen. Oh. They'd all of a sudden like care about that and care about what it's going to do to They'd the They'd all town. become communists? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Nikki, uh, sorry. Nick NYC, 200 bits. Thank you very much for that. Lunchbox Lob. Well, this is still going. We got another minute all right, so for the hype train to be open, even though we're already at 150%. Well, maybe we can warm this up a bit because it's going to hurt to go Just down. from Minnesota with 100 bits. But what happens when she, oh, there it is. What? The little dumbbell. Oh, yeah, it's there. And we got the, the silver dumbbell with the Wait, people are bits. people are using the old cats. Use the new cats. What old cats? Go up. Who's that cat? Oh, that's just an emote that's like in Twitch. Maybe Hashtag from a different channel. Not my cat. Not your cats. 
But your oh. cats are not available in the free emotes, so it has to be a subscriber that gets oh. them. Oh. Oh, Seattle Cocktail Club is in here. Can you please explain, say the name of this thing? Ooh, Seattle Cocktail Club is also going to be in one of the games coming up. That's going to be a lot of fun. On the morning show podcast. Not the whole club, obviously. The main person. Oh, it looks like we got a we got a COVID case in the chat. Oh, no. Right. Thank you. All good. It's paid time off and I'm back. So it should be all good. And that's Jordy Matthew. Hope you feel better. That's a HIPAA violation, Anthony. It's in the chat. Oh, HIPAA. my colleague tested positive. Oh. Oh, they sent you home. Man. That's pretty cool. So you could actually like, well, I mean, it's cool if you're, you and your coworker are feeling good. All right. It is done, Carla Marie. Here we go. Cheers to you. Look at all those cats in the chat. Chat cats. It's hard to take this as a shot because it's so cold. Mm. And I got a chunk. You know what's funny? So Karina from New York says not a violation. It's your own information. Um, not a HIPAA violation if it's your own information you're sharing. I remember very early on when like I know. the world. That's why I was, I was just so everyone knows. Yeah. I know that wasn't a HIPAA violation. I was just messing around. When the world j- just discovered what HIPAA was and what a HIPAA violation was. Every time we would talk about something related to COVID. Right. Because all the news was like pretty fresh while we were still on the radio. Someone would text me like, this is a HIPAA violation. You guys should go to jail. Like, I don't I don't think you understand what we said, what a HIPAA violation is, and what jail is for. <laughs> like, the crazy I, thing is we weren't even on the radio when vaccines were a thing. Yeah. That was a whole nother yeah. you I you vaccines. I can't get a vaccine because that's HIPAA. It was just so ridiculous the amount of people that would just start yelling things at us. And it, we weren't even like, it was just talking about what cities were doing or what offices were doing, things like that. It was the weirdest phenomenon. Ugh, you guys are going to jail, HIPAA. That's, that's not how any of this works. Frozen Passion Punch. The recipe is in the chat, saddlecocktailclub.com. Fred the Mailman said, I hear that Dora song where she says, backpack, backpack. Mm-hmm. But it's Carla Marie saying, chat cats, chat cats. That's actually pretty good. Thanks, Fred. That's pretty good. You know, I was trying to find a a GIF or what are they called? Stickers on Instagram that you can use like on a story. What are they called? Stickers? Mm-hmm. Of Swiper from Dora. That's the monkey, right? Swiper, no swipe it. Yeah. So then I was like, well, let me go and let me also make sure I'm spelling this guy's name right. So I go, now I'm down a rabbit hole of watching clips of Dora the Explorer. And the whole thing is like, Swiper steals things, obviously. That's yeah. why it's Swiper, no swiping. And Dora tells all the kids that are watching, like, we have to say, Swiper, no swiping, over and over and over again, and it'll get him to stop stealing. Yeah. And I'm like, this is so bizarre. That sounds like a HIPAA violation to it me. It does. Like, what if, what if Swiper's stealing was a medical condition, you know? And then he got COVID. This is all a HIPAA violation. It's disgusting. He, Dora should go to jail. I think that's what we've learned today. I think we've learned Dora just violates HIPAA rules. Um, now, now that the money shot screen is over, back to the regular screen here. A couple things we got to talk about today. Dunk Tank Marie. Um is Eminem uncancelable? Ooh. We kind of talked about this last week. There are certain celebrities and certain like figures who it doesn't matter what people say about them online. They're just, and I also. It depends what you're doing. I also believe that no one's actually really been canceled. Same. And people usually go, well, Harvey Weinstein It's like, no, he went to jail for sexual assault. Like that's not being canceled. He's probably still making money that's, off of movies. That's going to jail yeah. for a crime. It's not being canceled. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else do we have? Oh, and then weekend plans, because you got some big things coming up this weekend, Carla Marie. So many things. Uh, now, just two things. first up is Dunk Tank Marie. Yeah. So it's, it's always been on my, like, bucket list. I always wanted to be in a dunk tank. And on Tuesday night, I got a text from my boss for the social side of things at the Seahawks. And he was like, hey, we have a dunk tank here for Kids Day. Would you want to be one of the people in it? And I was like, sure, I'll bring a change of clothes. 
Um, so I was the last person to go in the dunk tank yesterday at training camp for the Seahawks, which was the worst person to be because <laughs> um, you're in everybody's yeah, sweat. Yeah, that's, that's fine. So It's a big tank. It also was not that hot out yesterday. Like I was yeah, actually we went, cold. We went from 90 degrees 95. like for four days in a row here in Seattle to 60, literally 60 it's degrees. 61. It's actually in the 50s right now. It's crazy. So <clears throat> I got to go in the dunk tank. I went after Blitz. <laughs> Sergeant Sin said last person to be in a tank of people soup. Yeah, it was. <laughs> that sounds gross. Um, so Blitz went in, got pretty wet himself. And uh, then I well, went in. Well, who's Blitz? Oh, the mascot. There you go. The Seahawks. Cool bird, but I don't know. He tried, he scared me yesterday when I was walking and I jumped and then there was a baby nearby and the baby got scared and started crying and then threw up. <laughs> it was it was quite the experience. I tried to calm the baby down. Whatever. Anyway, so I get in the dunk tank, I sit up there and I'm like, oh man, this is cool. And then Blitz just goes boom and pushes the thing. <laughs> so I got uh wet within 10 seconds of being up there. That's good though. I actually like that. Well, because now like the, the stress goes away because you're already wet. It already happened. No, nope, it does not. Okay. Have you ever been in a dunk tank? Yeah, I have. We used to, so my uh, uncle used to run our church scout group at St. Mark's church in Teaneck, New Jersey. And we used to have a festival every year to like raise money. And one of the things that was there oftentimes was a dunk tank. So all of the scouts would go in there. Well, I don't know if you've been as an adult. No. I was like a teenager at but most. Like, or maybe this is just me. The worst part of the dunk tank is the nerves. Yeah. I dunked myself at one point. And I got so scared I fell in. How? So one of the, so it was all kids who apparently had cannons just, I got dunked 10, 15 times. Yeah, I dunked 15 times. You didn't okay. get dunk tanked. I got dunked 10 to 15 times. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> I got dunk tanked. Um. <laughs> And one of the times it almost hit and I was like, I went, I was looking and I went, oh, and I, <laughs> and the kid was like, why I go? That doesn't count. And I get back in and he nails it and I fall back. You, you startled yourself so much that you fell off the plank. Well, I, that's crazy. I realized because if you sit too far back and you fall, that thing smacks you in the back, which I got a bunch. Oh yeah. Back. yeah. So I was like sitting at the edge, but like it was a constant ab workout mm -hmm. and my legs were like dangling and I was slippery and I'm trying not to fall. It was an experience. Uh, Terry Hughes in PA said, how are you in sweatshirts? It's 100 degrees here in Pennsylvania because it's it almost, this is the crazy thing. It is almost 50 degrees cooler here in Seattle. That's crazy. It's 61 degrees right now. Okay, so 40 degrees. 40 degrees cooler. It's kind of wild. And but Jerry was, Matthews said doubled as a workout. I tell you win. what, I was exhausted. So then I had to go interview the players as they were coming off the After field. After you were dunked? Soaking wet. I didn't Very have time funny. to change. So I was dripping. My makeup was everywhere. Thank God I had sunglasses. And I came home and I was like, I am exhausted. Just from be and I was shivering, right? So I'm shivering. Getting in and out of the dunk tank for 30 minutes was my time. So here's a question. You're at the training facility, right? The VMAC mm -hmm. for the Seahawks. You mentioned changing. You didn't have time to change. Is there like a because the guys, the players probably yeah, have like a really cool locker room. Is there a cool there. locker room that you get to use? I was in the women's locker room. There's like a staff locker room. Do they have your name on like a little Not mine, but grave? all the other women do. Wait, how that come your name's not there? Because I'm not a full-time employee. I'm just a person. You're just a person? Who shows up for a few days. Is it end. cool though? Do, like, does it compare? Have you seen the guys' locker room? I have not. Have I'm you been to a professional locker room? Professional sports locker room? Uh, I did a tour of, I think, uh, the old Giants Stadium. Because they're pretty cool. Yeah. Um... And at uh, Yankee Stadium, we peaked in. Oh, that was in high school? That I was also oh, you said we, like I, I, I thought would... I was with you. No, oh. that was high school. Um, the old Yankee Stadium, I also got a tour of. So, what yeah, if, it's sick. What if we, because my dad, since he is in jewelry, can engrave things, right? What if we engrave a name plate for next season, and you every time you show up to the well, I will say it's, it's training not, facility, you can put your name in there. It's not actually engraved. It's like um, a place card. But, like, nice. It's not, like, printed on a piece of paper. Yeah, those are still usually engraved. Mm, it's not engraved. No? It's, like, 3D printed. Oh, that's cool. Kind of. That's actually cooler. Like a like a, like a a name tag. Do we... We got to know someone that can 3D print your name. Also, all the lockers are taken. Yeah, but just take someone's. 
show dominance. Okay, so anyway. And you got you to gotta stab someone in the bathroom. No. Oh, but jail. I was the only one okay. in there, and there were all the, I was like, oh, there's Q-tips, there's makeup remover. This is the life. And you know what's also so cool? They have a cafeteria, and I get to eat lunch there, and it's always free, and it's always available, and the food is so good. There's a smoothie station. I haven't gotten a smoothie yet, but the players, they all have their smoothies, their specific smoothies that they like waiting for them after. That's pretty cool. And it's kind of like a Barry's Boot Camp class. Kind you can like of. put your order in before the before you work out. They're not paying for it. Now, do you get a smoothie? I well, not waiting for me, but I can probably order one and get it at lunch. See, this is where you and I differ, Carla Marie. Yes, because I feel like if I was in that job, no, I'd like me. I would become buddies with all the cafeteria people, all the people who are like are in charge of things. I'd become friends with all of them, and I too would then have. No, no, no. A they smoothie don't. afterwards. The smoothie is like waiting for them where they exit. Like that's someone's job on the team to bring the smoothie there. Not- you're part of the team. You wear a Seahawks shirt to work every day. I do. <laughs> but you're not actually officially a part of no. the team. Um, there was something. Oh, because this is a question I get a lot. Claire and Olympia, do you get tickets to the game so Anthony can go? A yes. lot. You know how many people have been like, oh, tell Car- Carla Marie congratulations. Also, do you get to go to the games? Yes, he does. Like, uh, Levy from Title Boxing. I was talking to him as I left the class the other day, and he he actually came outside as I was leaving, getting my bike to uh, to ask me that question. Yep. So I get to go to games. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. I don't think I would try to get autographs. I'm not really. I'm not an autograph person. I think mainly because I don't know what to do with them. Right. The only thing I currently oh I might have one Fallout Boy thing signed. It's a record, mm-hmm. and I have a. Oh, you have no. You have that. Big Island Records thing that we have in storage. That's not mine. That's yours. It's not mine. It is. It was used to be over your desk at Elvis's. That's not mine. Oh, I guess it's mine. So, um, I have a knife signed by I don't the guy who played in the following, the stabber guy, Joe. What's his Joe. real name? Yeah, I don't know. What his real I name don't even is. know. I just throw the knife out, but it was my grandma. So what am I gonna do? But yeah, why did he sign your grandma's knife? Because I was like, Mom, I need a knife that's, like, not our regular kitchen knife. And she had, like, a collection of my grandma's knives. And it was wood, so he signed it. And this is because your grandma passed and she doesn't want to throw them away? Is that? I guess so. I, are I, they really good knives? No. I, was, I mean, we use it. We do? <laughs> yeah. And I told you to stop putting it in the dishwasher. Oh, I don't, don't remember that at all. Because it's got his signature. I don't know why I, like, that movie, that show was, at like, one season. It was so good. I, whatever. That Stupid. show had, like, the biggest rise and fall that I can remember. Because everyone was watching season one, and then for some reason, by the end of season two, everyone's like, I'm done with all this killing. But and then I, it got canceled. I think, though, in the sports world, that's where autographs make sense, right? Like, if you have an autographed baseball mm-hmm. or uh, a bat or a, a football, like, whatever it may be, that's where it's cool. A jersey. I feel like in the music world, autographs, at this point, like, what are you signing, right? Unless I have a CD or a record. Boobs. Don't, you sign, don't rock star sign boobs? Is but that just, still a thing? It just reminded me of Spice World. Do they sign boobs? When? Seems like a weird thing for the Spice Girls to do. They sign the aliens boob, right? Or something. Something with the Spice Girls and aliens and signature. Um, but I've never really been an autograph person. We've had people ask for our autographs, and I'm like, Are you, but you're going to throw this. I out. think the reason autographs aren't a thing anymore is because now selfies with the artist is or artist or actor or... And I would, I would, thing. I would argue that, like as, as dumb as we say selfies are, I think that's actually cooler than an autograph. Because think of what the autograph, and yes, you could sell autographs back in the days, like a collector's uh, mm. uh, group. But I think normally the autograph is to show. Back in the day, it was like to show your friends and your family, look who I met. But like you could have signed that. Yeah, you could have. But it's hey, I went to this concert and look how close I got to the artist. They signed this for yeah. me. So I think that's where selfies now have replaced that. I do have a, an actual a signature right there. Grab that football. So, Carla Marie's friend Hannah, who's in the chat as my friend Hannah, um, Devontae Adams is no longer, her and her husband are Packers fans, and Devontae Adams was there. Now he's a Raider, so this is a Devontae Adams signed ball that they no longer wanted because he's not a Packer anymore. So now I have it. Um, going back to the following the TV show it used to be on Fox, I believe. Yes. Uh, we got a message from Hav that said, Ant- Anthony literally would let us watch the following at home. Wouldn't let us watch the following at home because it gave him That nightmares. is not true. 
because I used to run around the apartment going, it's Kevin Bacon night, everybody. And we would all watch the following together. Remember we had Kevin Bacon on our show? Wasn't he weird? Something happened. He's a little weird, but very nice. I think we were like, oh, six degrees of separation. He was probably oh, like, yeah, I'm did, so sick of this. I think Elvis did the six degrees. No, he was on our morning show in the studio. What? We, and when we were on power, he came in. You don't remember that? I don't. Yeah. I don't remember that at like, all. That was, Kevin Bacon was on our show? Yeah. Hillary Clinton and Kevin Bacon and, oh, but <laughs> were not on, on our, our show. show? Uh, Uncle Joey from Full House. We interviewed him. We did pie in the face with him. Oh, we did. Yeah. The only person I can really remember, uh, Hillary Clinton and Joe Gatto. And Joe Gatto. Oh, and Sean T., of course. Kevin Bacon was on our show? Huh. I guess we had a real show. What do you know? If Kevin Bacon's there, it's real. Um, going back to Seahawks, then we'll move on. One of the coolest things now is, like, I've truly been there three, what, four, three days, and some of the players are getting used to me asking oh, yeah. them weird questions. So as they're running off the field, they're like, oh, mini Mike, what do we got today? And they're like, they're so kind. Not because they think your name is Mike, because you have a <laughs> tiny microphone. Yes. <laughs> um, but before practice, I get to hang out with some of them to ask them like more, not in-depth questions, but like spend more time with them. And again, I'm not going to reveal what I've done because you'll see it when it's on social, if it gets posted. But they're so fun. So fun. My current favorite player is... Well, so I got to meet Bo Melted and be like, hey, we're both Rockers kids from Jersey. And he was like, oh, no way. Um, but my favorite player is DJ Dallas. Why is that? He is a riot. He's so fun. And Ryan Neal. Ryan Neal's awesome. We bonded over our love for cats. What if they watch this and now you're, you're like creating division amongst the players? Then they need to impress me. Okay. But I'm going off of who gives me the best content. That's fair. <laughs> uh, Angela in Spokane in the chat said, when I did a meet and greet with Carrie Underwood a few years ago, she signed a CD cover. We could bring in whatever we wanted, but I mm -hmm. wanted something small enough to put back in my purse. Um, she wrote a message and signed it. Of course, I got a photo with that's her as well. Cool. I think, yeah, if you get like a message from an artist or a player or something, that's pretty cool. I also, if it's like your favorite artist, right? Like yeah. if you're just someone who goes around and collecting autographs, do they mean anything? But that's, that's something that uh, people do with athletes is you'll go to a, a training camp type oh, event and you try to get as many as you can. People screaming for the yeah. for Tyler Lockett to sign their... We got to actually uh, do some stuff with Tyler Lockett. Remember we went to a Safeway? It was Tyler Lockett. Um, Cliff. Cliff. No, Cliff. Mm -hmm. And uh, Richard Sherman came up for the, the event as well after he was yeah, in Safeway San Francisco. Yes, Safeway is a partner of the Seahawks. Um and so they do uh, some events at Safeways pretty often. We were doing a food drive, but um, I should tell Tyler Lockett that. Martha1383 said, what's with the tiny mics? I will say they, they the pick up better audio than they look like they should. Mm -hmm. And they're just fun to hold. So A, for me, the audio was better. B, when I'm outside at training camp, I can't get anything that is going to have music in the background. Mm -hmm. And there's DJ Super Sam is there playing music super loud the mini mic actually isolates just the person talking so it helps um but it's also more fun if i'm like here talking to this opposed to being like sticking a camera in someone's face and expecting them which i still am doing but i'm like here and they love it they like grab it mm. and they're talking into it it's so fun yeah i think it does make it make it fun yeah oh hob said tiny mike was anthony's nickname in eighth grade wow <laughs> magic there's magic mike but you got tiny mike Hav is one of my favorite humans in the whole world. I lived with him for a while, went to college with him. I'm about to kick him out of this chat. No, I will let him back in. Um, Hav, you always have a home here. <laughs> You're always welcome here. No more you look great towel on the table. No, we actually have like an act, a real round tablecloth, which makes things a lot easier. Do you, this is going to be very specific, but I get kind of like creeped out with light touches. Light. Oh, like, like oh, if something is like, if something is dangling and touching me, I can't, I can't deal with it. Um, there's a name for that. Like there's like, I just saw it last week cause my best friend Alex doesn't like that. Yeah. And I think I sent it to her. So one of uh, the, one of the things I didn't like about the, you look great towel on the table was the, the edge of it because of the size of the table. It hung down just enough where it would like hit my leg. Oh yeah. Ugh, I couldn't do it. No, it's not that bad. Okay, well, uh, hap hapophobia is the fear of being touched, like, period. Hapophobia? Oh, like hapactic? Hap what is that word? 
Haptics? I don't know. Haptic. It's what oh. I always turn off on my phones because when you type, it what? it shakes. I like that. I don't like it at I all. I like that. Yeah, but like if I would just like to do this to you. No, I, no absolutely not. Ab- stop it. Stop that. Don't like it one bit. <laughs> um, Rebecca in Jacksonville said I can't deal with that either. Now, moving on though. Is Eminem uncancelable? And I did see, I think it was Jordy Matthew earlier on when I was saying that I don't believe people have actually been canceled. Uh, Jordy Matthew brought up Louis C.K., who just won awards. He was, he won, yeah, he won a, a gold, not a Golden Globe, a Grammy recently for his comedy yeah, album. Yeah. So I would argue that if you could win a Grammy, if you could win the mm-hmm. highest, one of the highest awards in your craft, mm-hmm. you haven't been fully canceled. There were people who took a step back from working with Louis C.K. Of course. Because asking people to watch you jerk it is weird. Right. Um, but like someone like R. Kelly, you can say he's been canceled. You can't. He went to prison, right? Like yeah. what you were saying earlier about Harvey Weinstein. You went to prison. So are you committed you- a crime and you yes. went to prison. That I, I would argue that that can't be argued in the canceling category. No. Especially because you can still stream his music and he can still make money. Yeah, exactly. But no, no. And people I still go. I, I people still go to his concerts when when concert promoters take the risk and sign R. Kelly. Now he's not going to be going anytime soon because I'm pretty sure he's going to jail. Right. But even after all the crazy news about R. Kelly came out, he was still selling out shows. Chris Brown still sells out shows and and makes a whole lot of money. Um, just because the internet might not like those people yeah. doesn't mean they have been canceled. But this gets me all the way over to Eminem. Eminem. So this Marshall story, Mathers. Yes, not the candy. Slim the Shady. The um, candy rapper. So let me pull this up real quick. It all started with Tyga, who has a song called I Caramba. Tyga is Kylie's baby daddy. Yes. Okay. Um, so I guess the internet was like all of all angry at Tyga and he came out and he apologized. Because he has a song called I Carumba and like the Mexican American right, community right, right, was, right, right. was uh, not happy about it. So then that conversation online right. shifted and brought up a song that Eminem did with D12 years ago. I was like, well, how come Eminem hasn't claimed or hasn't apologized for this song? And let me Wait. pull up the song. What? We just got this message. From? In the chat. Hilarious Jose. Just want to say hi. Proud of you guys. Look at this awesome community you have. Is that Jose from here? Yeah. Oh, what's up, Jose? Jose from the Brooke and Jeffrey show. What's up? Um, Who, I don't know if he knows this yet, but we'll be getting him on the morning show podcast to play a game. Sweet. I've been talking to Brooke about it. So, back, well, hello. Uh, that, that's just really cool. I've never seen that before. I've seen new follower, new know, know. chatter, first time chatter. So, sh- social media users are branding the 49-year-old rapper's 2004 song with D12 called My Band as inappropriate as the music feature uh, music video featured them dressed as they were in a mariachi band. Okay, that's... But, but, like... Here's the thing about Eminem that I believe... Because, I mean, the LGBTQ community wanted him to apologize for a long time. I mean, there Christina was a... Christina Aguilera th- wanted him to apologize. Carson Daly and Fred yeah. Durst. And I think with someone like Eminem... There's a there's a weird thing that happens when you portray yourself as the bad guy and yeah. and you don't apologize for anything. You somehow become uncancelable because the Internet's opinion doesn't matter to you. Now, I'm not I, I'm not defending or denouncing uh, Eminem's actions, dressing up as a mariachi. Band. I mean, he dressed up. One of the things he would do in a lot of his videos was dress up as different characters. Yes. Uh, me, uh, Michelle brings up a great point. You can't cancel someone exactly. who doesn't care. And I think that's where Eminem falls. Very different category than like the the R. Kelly's, Chris Brown's, Donald Trump's of the world who are uncancelable. I think Eminem is a, a, a different category where he just doesn't care. And his whole point is he's trying to get people riled up. So if you do get riled up and you call for him to be canceled or apologize, that's exactly what he wanted. Right. So it doesn't matter to him. Well, and also... I think the fact that Eminem has been around for so long doing this, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like he just came on the scene this year and he's being this guy. He's done this since 1999. I think if a new person came out, right? A new artist Mm -hmm. was like dropping these tracks the same way, the same thing that Eminem did in 1999 or whatever, 2000, 
two, three, yeah. four. I think it would be received differently than maybe. I mean, we're all we all are just more. I mean, without like going full hashtag on it, we're all more woke, right? Mm. Like we we would know that something like that is offensive now, and it would be fixed right away. Hence Beyonce going in the studio and fixing things immediately. Lizzo, same thing. So I think going back on stuff sometimes is like, well, we accepted it then. You know, it doesn't mean we have to accept it now, but that art's been out for so long. Do I think that's 100% all the time? No, I think all of this is up for conversation. Yeah, I just, it's funny because I'm going through some of the Twitter comments now and one of them, oh, it just left. So how come there's no outrage in the Latino community for Eminem doing this? Because it was a screenshot of him dressed up as the mariachi band. Wait, wait. And oh, sorry, that was the same in conversation. Yeah, it's the same okay. conversation. Um, and it's just, it's funny seeing how many people are like, because no one cares yeah, and because Eminem doesn't care. So it's impossible to get Eminem riled up about your opinion. If he doesn't care about your opinion. Um, Hob brings up a great point though. Like look at South park, mm -hmm. what that show has done over the years. And well, I also think there's, there's something to be said for if you insult everyone, it's hard for one community to be like, oh, he's singling us out. And, and I think South Park is a good example of like South Park took shots at literally anything that was in pop culture. Mm -hmm. And any every single type of person South Park has made fun of in some way. So once you get to that level, you're just like, oh, this is just your this is the brand of entertainment that you do. So you and, can't be canceled for the one thing that you do really, really well. And you don't have to support these artists if you don't believe in what they do. Also, yeah. Now, that doesn't mean that we should just let them get away with doing things when they're, like, so completely yeah. wrong. But also, people make mistakes. And it de how they react to those mistakes mm -hmm. is often that's how I judge the person. Yeah, and I guess, so, like, again, this came on the, t the heels of Tyga doing – his song and then he actually apologized for it and Eminem's just not even going to respond. Well, Ooh, hydrate reminder. What I just don't understand is don't these people have teams? What do you mean? Of that are supposed to like all right, let me go through everything and see what makes sense. Focus groups, anything. Yeah, I'm sure they do and I'm sure some of them listen and some of them don't. But where was it? Uh, Nick NYC seven one eight said, uh, "Nailed it." Different era, different fan groups, and I think the other part. Angela and yeah. Spokane said it in the chat. South Park takes shots at anything and everything, and they do it well. So the other part is like you. I think, and this is where comedians making fun of people. Um, you can divide, right? You can say there are comedians who do this so well that when they're making fun of a group of people. They're oftentimes talking about our society's reaction at large. They're not actually talking about that mm -hmm. group of people. Then there's the comedians who just come in and they have like stupid, like bad jokes yeah. at other people's expense. And I think there is a difference there. And I think your level of mm -hmm. entertainment and how good you are at that thing separates you from just someone who's trying to come in there, say some outlandish things, insult a couple of people and get a rise out of them. It's true. Like even Eminem, you could look at Eminem and, it's funny because the, the issue at hand is not a song because he's there are a lot of songs that you can take issue with with Eminem. Um, actually, I listen to a lot of like mid 90s to early 2000s hip hop mm -hmm. and the amount of homophobic things that are said in almost oh all God, of the yeah. songs. I catch myself now at the gym like, ooh, I used to like sing this loud and not yeah. even realize how bad it was or think about how bad what I was saying was, especially when I listen to DMX, it's I crazy. But the, the issue at hand with Eminem and this, this Twitter, this fake Twitter uproar is it wasn't even a lyric. It was just a, a costume that he put on in a music video in which throughout his whole career, really he's done that. Remember him running around as the super, uh, Superman and Oh, costume. One of, they that costume. I forgot what video that was. Is that Slim Shady? It might be. He dressed up as Elvis dead on the toilet. He did do that. That's, that's, I think that's Slim Shady. The other thing, and, and uh, if Hav is still in the chat, he was part of this conversation as well. 
in my group chat, we have one friend, Rob, who actually buys DVDs of shows and stuff like that. That's awesome. And now, which all of us were like, why do you have this huge collection of, of DVDs? But now, much like Beyonce went back and re-recorded her songs, The Office has some scenes that are changed. Um, It does. What are they? I forgot what the example was in the chat. I'm sure someone... All right. Well, I need to find out because there's also the extended version of The Office that has been released. So mm -hmm. is it that? Is I don't it... know. But there are certain shows now that have had like, scenes at... altered in uh, their, their streaming version. Stranger Things has altered some things. Um, and Well, didn't Star Wars is the original thing to do this. They altered something way back. Like years ago they did this, but it wasn't because of... I don't think it was because of... Um, an uproar of any kind. I think it was just what the altered side. I, I oh. literally just read this last week. I don't remember it. Oh, The Office had a blackface episode. Yeah, I mean, I could see that. And do they but, take that out or is it still there? They still have the... Uh, what does Michael Scott say? Oscar, you're gay. Boom. Roasted. Yeah. But he always... Like... Um, but here's the interesting... Steve Carell talks about now. He's like... That would never, that, that line would never be in there. But, and, and that line represented the time that they recorded that in. And I think what people forget when they're like, oh, you could never say that anymore. It's like, the whole idea of Michael Scott was to be the bad corporate yeah. Yeah. leader. Yeah. Like, his character is supposed to say those things to call out the things that corporate America let slide in that the real world. That are wrong. Exactly. And, and I, I truly think that I think the office actually made people be like, oh, wait, so what my boss is doing is inappropriate. Yeah, exactly. And I really, I truly, and this is as someone who's watched it years after it's been done, right? I've, I've watched it over and over again, but not when it was out. And I think when the show came out in like 2004 and 2005, people were like, oh, that's, that's not right. Yeah. I get it now. And, and a lot of people are saying in the chat, that was the whole point. Michael Scott was intentionally cringe. Uh, cringe from Tacoma Swifty. And then Ew, my brother said he was the modern Archie Bunker. Which like says the job. things that you're not actually supposed to say to call to call out how ridiculous those things are. Yeah. Right. But doing it in a way that was unbelievably entertaining and smart. Like it's not just saying words to, to say them. It's doing them. There, there was a point to all of that. Yeah. The diversity day episode. On the office, Claire brought it up. She said, I find it funny, but I could see how people mm -hmm. were mad about it. But the whole point of Diversity Day is these are the stereotypes that people associate with all these different types of people, and that's wrong. Now, yes, it, they're making jokes about it, and people think it's funny. to It, it depends how you receive it, right? Because there's the episode of... I'm sorry, they wear different things on their... I don't even remember. They wear... It's like oh, playing yeah, they, heads up. They wear the, the cultures on their heads. Cultures or things. And I or think. nationalities. And so I think someone's wearing something that says Asian, right? And someone's like, you're a bad driver. And they go, I'm a woman. And it's like, that's a two and one. Yeah. Now, if you are at home watching that and you're already bigoted, you're like, yeah, because women suck at driving or because <laughs> Asians suck at driving. Yeah, that's, you're just going to feed into that kind yeah. of person. But someone like me is like, well, not all women suck at driving and not all Asians suck at driving. I know that. I accept that. And I know these are things that people assume. Let's see. Karina from New York says, uh, watch many of our childhood shows and movies and you wouldn't want your young child watching it now. So true. Flintstones movie and the Sandlot were ones I tried to watch with my eight year old and I stopped them. Hmm. I'm trying to think. I, I don't remember. I know I did, but I don't actually remember the Flintstones movie. Me neither. But the Sandlot. one that came out when I was a kid and Sandlot. I'm Is trying to think. they idolize Wendy Peppercorn? Peppercorn? I mean, they do. They do sexualize Sexual. a little girl. Yeah. But they're also little kids. Yeah. So that makes sense for them. Like having a crush on someone. Um, let's see. Let's see. When Eminem dropped his song, Darkness, I got a I got huge backlash for liking. Oh, where is it? This song. Right there. Liking the song. But when you really listen to it, you can understand the entire meaning. He talks about a lot of sensitive topics, but I like it. I've got to go back and listen. I wasn't the biggest Eminem fan when he was at like the height of his stardom. I think he's a great rapper. Like, I think what he does is good. I just never became a huge Eminem fan. I don't know why. I did love Eminem a bit in middle school. I'll be honest, though. I would love for Eminem to just straight up diss me. 
like just be like, all right, tell me everything you will. about you. And then I'll be like, you stupid bitch and your cats. Like, what's he going to say? Uh, Mergen 1990 said, I'm rewatching Boy Meets World since they started a rewatch podcast. Yes, they did. And that's uh, Tara. Tara's like project, right? Yeah, she was on do- the morning show podcast during Disney Week. And yeah, she's the producer for that yeah. show, uh, that podcast. There was, who was it? Maybe Sarah Silverman. But, um, and it's it, going back to Mergen's comment. It's like there, everything has some cringy moments when you look back at it. And I think you can make the argument that not everything is supposed to stand the test of time. Mm-hmm. Most, most art forms, right? Most forms of entertainment speak to the time that they are in. So it is hard to judge everything mm-hmm. with a modern lens when they weren't viewing what they were doing with the same lens. So it's interesting. Yeah. No, and this I, all comes from the internet and their fake outrage over Eminem. I also do think when people are like, oh my God, there's outrage on the internet or this is going viral. Just because a thousand people on the internet commented on something, I don't think makes it viral or makes it real. Because as we've learned, Twitter is what? 30% bots. It's 30% things that don't, that aren't actually real. I, w- I wouldn't buy Twitter. You wouldn't buy Twitter if, if you're was, Elon Musk? What's happening? Marijuana, thank you very much for the five gifted thank tier one subs. Thank you. Ryder Strong finds more things cringy than I would have expected. Which one's Ryder Strong? Um, That's the brother, right? Sean, the friend. Oh, the friend. Okay. I used to love that show, though. Oh, my God. I... I wanted to be Topanga so bad. Sometimes, like, even, like, now, like, when my hair's like this, like, this is how our hair would be. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so Topanga. And then there was... Like, I, w- I assumed that when I grew up, I was going to look like Topanga and be, like, you know, have, like, these big lips because she had big lips and, like, just be this cool girl in high school. And I got to high school and I was like, why is it happening? It didn't happen. Is that when you realized she was probably an actual adult when she was filming? That? I don't. I don't think they were though. They were kids. They were probably. They were probably like two years old when they were yeah. in the show. Uh, let's see. Michael said Elon Musk apparently wouldn't buy Twitter if he was Elon Musk either. No, he's trying to back out of it. And then, what else do we have? There was another comment I wanted. There was something about Zach Morris that came in here. Oh. Um. Give me one second, and I will find it. It was something that there's something called Zach Morris's trash. What? Oh, here we go. This is from Lenny from Queens. Anyone watch Zach Morris's trash made me think twice about Saved by the Bell. What is that? I don't know what Zach Morris's tr- was. It oh. like a Netflix documentary, YouTube video? Did I say the name wrong? That Ryder Strong is Sean Hunter. What did I say? That's the right name. But you said the friend. Yes. I asked if it was the brother. I think I said his name. I don't know if I said it right. Um, no, I don't know about Zach Morris's trash. Oh, well, yo, so for the mailman has watched it. You know what would be great? And Jordy Matthew brings this up in the chat. Boy Meets World and uh, Mr. Feeney. Mr. Feeney was awesome in Boy Meets World. I would love to get like a supercut of all of those fringe characters from sitcoms. Like the neighbor in Home Improvement. Mr. Feeney, all of the, the sage advice characters and someone should make like a coffee table book of just the best advice from auxiliary characters in shows. I would love that, but I bet you have to get all kinds of, um, was Mr. Wilson was the, uh, was the neighbor in home. Improvement. Yeah. Wilson Wilson. Um, Zach Morris's trash is apparently on Amazon, but it looks like it's also on. So is it, it's like a documentary. It looks like it's also on YouTube. And it's the time Zach Morris dumped a woman for saving something. The time Zach Morris covered up a death. Like, all the things he's done. Oh, okay. I'm in. Madison Taylor 310, welcome to the chat. Appreciate you hanging out. Hi, hi, hi. Oh, yeah, Feeney Feeney is no longer alive, right? Let's see. Mr. Feeney Boy Meets World. Poor thing died recently. Yeah, like not on the show. I think he's actually. Wait, no. Go down. Is he still alive? He's alive. Wait, Wikipedia. Born? Yeah, he's alive. 
He was also the 25th president of the Screen Actors Guild. Hav out here. Hav, honestly, yeah, now, now we know. might actually ban you. If he No, if he dies, it's all Hav's fault. Well, there was someone that, <laughs> then who was the old guy that recently died from a TV show? All of them. I feel like every day there's been an old, an old yeah, actor dead. I'll, I'll be honest. That's, oh, uh, I will cry when Mr. Feeney dies. Wait, why am I? What am I taking back? Oh, yeah. Wait, Mr. Feeney Hold is on, crazy, on Cameo. Crazy Dream Girl said him dying would be a huge story like Bob Saget's death. Take it back, Anthony. I wasn't the one that said he was dead. I was dying right now. Just like, <laughs> why am I getting in trouble for my friend's words? We do have something else to talk about. I knew there was something else I wanted to put on here. But wait, Mr. Feeney is on Cameo. Yes, I did. He was actually when I, the first time I ever logged on to Cameo. He was like the only big name that was there. I'll take. I'll or, take. No, I'm just Cam- thinking of Mr. Belding. I'm sorry. Okay. This He's is- another person that I'd put in my coffee table book. Uh, Hav said, "Sorry, he met Mr. Feeney, his third grade teacher." <laughs> Shut up, Hav. Okay. So, are we done with this conversation? James Cannon from Elf just died. Yes. Oh, James Con. James Con. Yeah. That was probably a typo on the, the keyboard. The dad from Elf. Autocorrect. Buddy, the Elf's real dead. Yeah. Which, <sighs> James Kahn, I believe, yeah, he is the coach in Varsity Blues, one of my favorite movies of all time. Okay. Does a great job there. So, we're going to move on to a new thing that's not on the list, and I meant to put it on there. Okay. So, we've talked about how I'm on Cameo. Yes. Cameo is a service where you can recre- request videos from someone like Mr. Feeney. Say, like, Anthony's a big Mr. Feeney fan or Hav is a big Mr. Feeney fan. And for their birthdays, I want to get them a video of Mr. Feeney doing a specific message to him. Okay. And then you you pay for it, whatever. For Sam's birthday, our friend Colleen and I and Anthony did uh, Kevin from The Office. And we got him to do a special message for Sam. So I joined Cameo. And I had one successful Cameo. I think I got paid $11. Nice. It was great. Now, you got paid $11, or is that like your that was, fee? That was after the, they took their cut. So what's your original fee? I think it's like 15 bucks. I don't even know. I got to look. Not bad. Oh, is Scary on Cameo? Crazy Dream Girl said, I hope you're charging yeah. more than Scary from Elvis' show. No, it's Scary. What's Scary? What's he on there? I, wait, just wait. So I get a request last week, and I'm like, ooh, a new request. How exciting. I did not fulfill this request. Okay. It said, for Phil. And then it said the reason they ticked off was just cause. Okay. It said about recipient. And then it said, maybe say, your girlfriend must have a lot of fun with that, especially when she's mad. So when you say no to her, does she say testicles and then you say yes, et cetera, et cetera? The occasion. Inside joke about Phil's sensitive injury. Instructions. Phil loves you and he has the most sensitive testicles in the world. Say hi and poke fun at his secret. Booked by Shane. Well... How much are they paying you for this? Eleven twenty-five. Yeah, and they're probably not worth it because I don't know what that's going to get used for down the road. So I didn't do that. Um, I didn't realize they could. Ask, I guess they could ask for anything, right? Yeah. Like, is there is there any overlap with Cameo and and uh, OnlyFans? Like, are there people who are using Cameo the same way people use OnlyFans? I don't think you can do sexual things on there. No. I guess I'll never Siri's be on it. Siri charges so much, guys. I- at a le- at it's like fifteen dollars for a cameo for me. What is it? What is scary charge? Do we know? Like no one's going at. Here's the thing. Scary did a. Oh. Scary did a great job at marketing himself as the Nana guy, the happy birthday guy. So oh yeah. If you grew up in New Wait, York, what'd you call him first? It was the Nana list. The Nana list. Yeah. What is that? Call him right now. That's what it originated as. The Nana and list. And he recently explained why, and I forget where. So, <clears throat> Scary, uh, I think it was like a song or something, but yeah, it was the Nana list, and then it turned into the birthday list and birthdays, and like, at, when I worked there, we stopped doing it, but originally it was, you had a, we would get requests from people who wanted to be on the list, and then he would shout them out on their birthday, like a special thing, like when he did the weather, he'd be like, also, happy you birthday. Because you're connected to the Bluetooth. Um, let's make sure. And he... It's kind of like how oh, I hold on. We got to stop Carla Marie because that happened. means we got just what just happened. Let's see. Thank you. Everyone's saying remember that on that list. Oh, we got rated. Sweet. Who? I'm looking for the events list and it's not coming in. Was it NK Mornings oh, again? Oh, it was NK Mornings. NK Mornings. 17 people. Thank you very Woo! much and welcome to the show. 
We're hoping to have them on the morning show podcast, actually. But you're going to call Scary, right, Carla Marie? Yes. We're going to be on a panel with Nick, mm-hmm. the end of NK Mornings. Okay, so I'm going to call Scary, but let me explain just why that people will... Uh, I pointed at the fact that they came in because they wanted to say congratulations on your new job, Carla. Oh, thank you. Sorry, I didn't mean to throw you off there, right. which I did. <laughs> you, well, you did this. <laughs> yeah, the, the, sometimes the chat moves too fast and we lose things. Uh, we can raid NK Morning sometimes, but they generally finish their show while we're on. So mm-hmm. one day we'll make it happen. But the reason Scary Jones from Elvis Duran in the Morning Show gets and can charge more for Cameo is because he has branded himself over the last 25 years as the birthday shout out guy. Mm -hmm. It is why I, more than many influencers out there, can get away with actually doing paid social media posts Mm -hmm. because I branded myself for years as the girl that knew the cool products for free. For about eight to 10 years of my life, I was just mentioning companies and brands on the air and on social media for you to check out. And then companies started paying me to actually do it. Okay. So in those same, so that's why I can get away with the social media things and Scary can get away with Cameo. It all depends on your branding. That's I'm not true. the birthday list girl. Now, let's try to call let's, this Let's guy. call. Let's get him on the horn. He should be awake. Is he a napper? What do you mean? Oh. Does he nap after the show usually? Uh, no. So for those who don't know, Scary Jones, uh, part of Elvis Duran the Morning Show, good friend of ours. We used to work with him in New York. <clears throat> Hello. Scary Jones, you are live on the Carla Marie and Anthony show. Hello. Yes. I've always wanted to be live on the Carla Marie and Anthony show. <laughs> okay, you definitely have been before. But so we were talking about Cameo and everyone was telling me in our chat that I needed to up my price because you charge way more. But I said, no, Ant- uh, Scary did such a great job over all these years at being the birthday list guy. That's why he can do that. Yeah, but you called it the Nana list. And Anthony thinks I'm like making up these words. So can you please tell him that it used to be called the Nana list? It, it should be called the Nana list. No, but I mean, it wasn't. I used to say happy birthday as happy Nana. Wait, when was this? See, he doesn't believe me. Yeah, we used to have a whole song. In fact, we used to play Scheme's Na 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 Hey Hey Kiss Him Goodbye as my theme song. Why do it but, used to be Happy Na Na Happy Na Na What? I'm scary, the Na Na guy. <laughs> what? See, and this I is was a- the Na Na guy. I was the Na Na guy with the Happy Na Na. This is when Anthony was probably listening to Hot 97. That's maybe, why. maybe at the time, but I, I feel like I've worked with Scary long enough to at least have to know this. No, he's the Nana guy. Because you got to remember, I well, started... Eventually, eventually, they dropped that part of it and just called them birthdays, and then we just did a birthday list, which you might remember. Yeah. Which you don't do anymore either. No, no. That, we dropped that bit like 10 years ago. Yeah, when I was there. <laughs> yeah, because when I started with Elvis, you were definitely still doing the mm-hmm. birthday shout-outs, and they were definitely called birthday shout outs they weren't it wasn't correct. called the yeah, oh, yeah you're not hallucinating okay correct that is right. i started in but in the, i started with elvis in early 2009 oh yeah yeah i mean i mean i'm going back to like 90s. the days of like the late 90s yeah. like 97 98 99 2000 2001 okay so i don't i don't feel as bad now not knowing that right. it was the non-elvis and then we found out then we found out Nana had a slang to it. Oh my god! Oh, you, what, what was were it? Were you canceled? Well, do you know you know Foxy Brown, the rapper? Yeah, she's the she's call herself. She has the illest Nana oh, in the game. Oh yeah, that's right. Ooh. I forgot. Yeah, you about go on that. Urban Dictionary and <laughs> well, uh, Google that for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is great. So scary in our chat here on Twitch. Uh, Bree from Arizona said my fiance sent me a cameo from Scary for my thirtieth birthday. Best surprise. Oh my God! Yeah, so so right, but so now what does this all have to do with the cameo tie-in? Now I'm trying to understand this. Okay, so I mentioned so, someone sent me a cameo request that was like super creepy, and I didn't do it, and I was like, I'm not doing okay. this. But it was about his testicles or yeah, something. Yeah, and whatever. But people were asking oh me like how much I make off cameo, and I was like, well, each cameo after they get their fee, I get eleven dollars and twenty five cents. <laughs> And everyone was right. like, you need to up your fee. Scary's charging so much more. And I was like, he can because he has branded himself as the birthday guy. After all these years, people want a birthday. So I was right. And all those. Right. And that's true. That's true. But however, it was I was up to fifty dollars. But I'm uh, exactly what you just said is why I've made my account. Um, 
I'm not bookable right now on Cameo uh, because at the time for the $50, I would keep like $40 of it. Mm -hmm. Now Cameo legit takes more. It's like 50, 50. It's even, it's worse. So like I was getting like $18, $17 off of a $50 play. So I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm out. And I, and I, and I literally made myself unbookable because they take way too much off of my bones. There is, there is a new company actually that's trying to do the same thing as Cameo. I forget what it's called. I'll have to find it and send it to you. Now, yeah. is but someone you also, tell me, what's your price? I, I am checking. Hold on. So someone also said that Garrett is on Cameo for 20 bucks. Garrett's on there for 20. Brody's on there. David Brody's on what, there. How much what? is Brody charging these days? If I'm less than Brody. We did a whole no. We did a whole thing. I think Brody got pissed that I was uh, at fifty dollars. I think he raised his price to the same. <laughs> the thing is, I did. I, so I've gone through Cameo recently and seen people that were like lesser uh, on the pecking order of life, uh, on the totem pole of life, <laughs> for more money. So I'm like, what? So. I may have to, if I go back into it, I may have to adjust my price because there are people out there charging $80, $90, $100 a cameo for, and I'm like, wait, you're who? (laughs) Here's what I think you should do, Scary. I'm $15 and Claire just messaged us and said that Brody is 40. I'm doing 20 bucks. Oh, so Brody's still trying to undercut you a little bit at least. So if someone's like on the fence. That's that's his nature. What do you think? That's what he does. (laughs) Here's, Here's what you should do, Scary. So we have some people that we know who have made a lot of money on OnlyFans. <laughs> and I think if you did if you did like a Mr. Michael Oppenheimer OnlyFans. Oh, where you could do like the You do his voice and like do and just say like weird things for people, I think you could rack up a lot of money that way. You might be able to retire. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, no. It seems creepy. I feel like the only way you make money is nudity and feet pics. Yeah, I mean that's most of it. It's nudity and feet. There are women on OnlyFans making a hundred grand a month. Mm-hmm. But what are they doing for that? Are they? Are they? Is it porn? Yeah. Is it nudity? Is it's, it? Or is it feet? Feet pics. I Apparently, think, feet pics make a lot of money. They do. Um, I, I think it's a little bit of everything. I think you'd be surprised at how little like hardcore porn is there. I think most of it is like girls by themselves, and a lot of it is. They create a connection with their audience and guys want to support them and they just keep sending them money every month. And um, because we know we were listening to Amaranth, who's like a bitch, a big uh, Twitch streamer saying the words big and Twitch together sometimes sound like bitch. I did not mean to say that. (laughs) Um, And she makes, I think, a million dollars a month just on OnlyFans where she makes like one point seven on Twitch all year. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, and she I'm in the wrong industry. From what I understand, she doesn't have sex with other people. She'll just but she is naked. take requests, do things, whatever. Yeah. So. Right. I've, I'll do it. I don't care. Uh, I don't think you would, though. You're, you're going to buy some. You're, 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 you're going to buy toys and have people control them remotely? Well, I, I that is a thing. The toys. No, no, but that is a thing. Like, there's like it's ways that you could. There, there's ways you could do it online, too, I think, where if you give someone like a login to an account, they don't need like a device to control your device something like that for a million dollars i would do it yeah i'm just saying apparently if you you can have all kinds of toys and stuff and then the people remotely pay to control the toy that you have Mm -hmm. Uh, i mean okay that's the thing it sounds fun (laughs) uh scary we were uh, before we were uh calling you i was i was concerned you were going to be taking a nap in the middle of the day are you a napper Big napper, but okay. I'm supposed to be going to my buddy's pool in about a half hour. So I'm about to like uh, take a shower and put on some sunblock and go to go to the pool. It's ninety, going to be ninety four degrees. It's going to feel like one hundred and five here in New York City. Oof. Yeah, yeah. it's a, so we had that last week and now it's sixty degrees. Oh wow! So is that what I have to look forward to as the weather moves across the country? Probably, yes, probably. You're the weather guy now. Yeah, congratulations by the way on uh, Colin Marie on uh, on your. On your, uh, we can talk about that, right? Yes, yes. Everyone, everyone, everyone knows. Everyone knows. Yeah. Okay, Seattle Seahawks in-game announcer. Yeah. Uh, hello. I like know. On on camera, that's big. That's yeah. big news. I start on Saturday, like doing the. In- I've been there doing social stuff over the last like week, but I'll be there at our like mock game on Saturday with doing all the stuff. It's gonna be wild. 
I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited. I can't. I want to catch a home game now for this. I want to fly to Seattle and see you in action. Come Please on out. Come. It's great. Oh, it's so cool. So, uh, all right. Well, cool. I, you know what? I got to make my appearance on your Twitch show too. I really, really love the idea of it. And Brody refuses to be on camera at, for Brooklyn Boys. Oh, so, man. what can I say? We will. We will video you in anytime you want. You just let us know. Okay. Also, oh, you guys want to come to our steak dinner? Oh, uh, you know <laughs> what? Doing- I. Oh my God, we wanted to get you on. I forgot we got an email from a listener telling us that the Brooklyn Boys were ripping us off because they were doing a live Brooklyn Boys podcast from a steakhouse. And Anthony and I did a live Monday Friday from a steakhouse and that you guys just oh, stole Oh, I remember it. that. Well, the thing the, the thing about us doing it from a steakhouse is this, I owe Brody a steak dinner, allegedly, and it's been an age-old joke. Okay. So it's only fitting that we, we do this from a steakhouse. That's fair. It's not a live podcast. It's, it's <laughs> not. It's just a meet up. M E A T up. So I love it's that. Brooklyn Boys meet up number one. So if you're in New York City, September 10th, Saturday evening, and you want to join, go to benjaminsteakhouse.com slash Brooklyn Boys and make a reservation and join us there. Okay. We'll be hanging out and meeting up with the slices. That's the slices so cool. are the people are our fandom. Yes, yes, yes. yes. But not That's for awesome. slices of pizza this time, for slices of steak. Well, yeah, exactly. Right. But I, the, the steak dinner bit is basically a long-running joke. You had to be there. It's an inside joke about our podcast. So it has nothing to do with copying you guys. Although, <laughs> Sinner's Steakhouse is on my list. I know. To go to in Point Pleasant. Well, we just got a message from Made by Erica, and she said, it's not allegedly. He actually owes him a steak dinner. <laughs> No, you guys should bring it to your council. I think they'll be more level-headed about it. The t- the, I did owe him a steak dinner. The time that I tried to repay him the steak dinner, it just so happened that manager of the restaurant recognized us while we were sitting there and then comped the meal. But my intent to pay him back that night, the three hours I spent with him there, was all on the table and I was ready to run my credit card. I did leave a $100 cash tip because we ran up a $500 bill. So I did, money came out of my pocket and I tried to repay him, but he claimed that doesn't count because it didn't hurt on my wallet enough. That's the crux of the argument to this day. That is such a Brody argument. Here's what I would like to do. I would like to actually, when do you guys normally record Brooklyn Boys? Is there a specific day of the week? We're about to record, we're about to record in a few hours uh, for, yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. well, we, yeah. got, we have to figure out a time where we're on Twitch and you guys are in the studio together or something, or we can get both of you on. Uh-huh. Because I think we could actually, I can argue both sides of this. Um, and I know my, my brother's right. in our chat and he actually brings up a good point. He said, Brody got his free steak, which meets the requirements. Yeah. How he got that free steak is not necessarily important here as long as he does. But Thank I would love you. to uh, have this Thank as an open council, hear both of your arguments and maybe right. do just, it, pull, post right. a vote. I just Bernie hope- doesn't like telling. Bernie doesn't like telling the story of how I made reservations. I went on a weeknight. It was three hours. I said I opened up the menu. I said whatever you want, Brody. We're gonna have this dinner, and we spent a lot of time together. But it wasn't until the end that he went sour on me when the <laughs> bill came and it said zero. And I looked at him and I look, and I could have kept it to myself and not Shut told up. him. I'm like, dude. I said, dude, they comped the whole dinner, and he goes. Oh my God, that's great. Guess what? You owe me a steak dinner still. <laughs> that's what he said. So my brother Michael said that he will represent you in this uh, online Twitch court we're going to have, but I will let you know, because you've met Michael before, but Michael is one of my two brothers and not the one who's a lawyer, but oh. he will represent okay. you for free. My other brother is a lawyer. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay. Because logic will prevail. <laughs> I, I can go both ways on this, but this is the most Brody argument mm-hmm. like to – to have also yeah. i'm yeah. hoping that like maybe with this new seahawks gig i will get a uh, comp steak dinners when i go out maybe. because that ain't happening to me right now maybe <laughs> oh my god uh so anyway uh, i hope i answered some uh, all your questions you and did. Stuff. I, I didn't mean to uh carry on and me- meander around no, no, no. Here, but... thank you for letting us interrupt your day go enjoy that pool yeah never an interruption i love getting calls from you guys oh we love you love you man i miss you i miss, miss you both you. That was so much fun. I love that guy so much. Um, I can't. Also, the fact that he kept saying, I spent three hours with him as if like his time was the gift. I mean, part of it. 
Part of it is. And so I think Jordy Matthew brings right. up a counterpoint to my brother mm -hmm. Michael's point. So my brother Michael's point was as Bro long as Brody got his free steak, the means of getting that free steak are kind of irrelevant. But Jordy Matthew brings up a point that the the deal was supposed to be for Scary to pay for. I guess it depends on how you what was the actual oh, deal. Yeah, we need to find that out. I think your brother Justin, who is the actual lawyer, should represent Brody. Oh, the two of them together would be bad, bad news. I, I don't know. Yeah. Because they, they're so de they're both so detail oriented and putting them on the same team, that's what dangerous for everybody. What? What happened to you? Me? I'm detail oriented. I just don't listen At to people. At a leisurely pace. I just don't listen to people. Uh -huh. That's my problem. That's, that's why I can never be a lawyer. I just don't listen to your details. All of my detail details matter. That's a great question, Martha. But if Scary wasn't there, would the meal have been comped? Because probably not. Scary, and it's funny because this really is the most scary Brody debate you can have. Because Scary is the person who gets free things all the time. And Brody is the one who will complain about the things that he gets for free regardless. Like, it's, it's just very much a very Brody and Scary discussion yeah. and this is what i would say to, to brody if he was to take someone out on a date right and he had a coupon for it does that make the date less valuable because he had a coupon because if that's the case like it depends on how he feels he on a that gift card like yeah, a or, gift that someone gave him exactly uh, what else do we have in the chat here before we get into uh weekend plans carly do you have anything because you do have a big weekend coming up I think that's everything. All right. So uh, explain. Explain what you have this weekend. So I said it a bit to scary, but this Saturday is the Seahawks mock game. It's where the team plays against themselves. Like the inner squad scrimmage. scrimmage. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do they call it officially? Uh, they call it a mock game. My parking pass is mock game. Really? Huh. But then I've also heard practice game, you know, thrown around the uh, the IPF. Oh, the, the indoor practice facility. Is that what they? That's what you got. You guys got to call it the IPF. What about the VMAC? The whole area is the V. The indoor practice facility is literally just the room they practice in. Oh, that field inside. Yeah, the, where you did your little. Where games. I became a star. Uh, the VMAC is the entire place. The okay. Virginia Mesa Athletic Center. So anyway, this Saturday, the mock game is taking place at Lumen Field, where the Seahawks generally play uh, for home games. So. That's happening, and that will be the first time I will be on mic in front of the crowd. That's pretty cool. Are you uh, nervous? I'm only nervous that because I'm not nervous about being in front of the crowd. That doesn't bother me. I can, no problem. million people, 10 people, it's the same thing to me. The issue is the feedback and the fact that you don't actually hear the words you're saying because it's so loud. So you don't hear the words you're saying until they come out of the the speakers, which is about three seconds after you say yeah, it. It's weird. So you have, I truly have to talk this slow, which I am not used to doing. Or good at. Correct. Okay. So that's the only thing I'm worried about. But we get to rehearse. There's a little dress rehearsal before. So that's exciting. I have to be there at 10, 15. So that was Meg's question. She said, can you practice speaking there before yes. the game? But again, there's not going to be people in there. And I think there's only 10,000 people at the mock game. So okay. it, it will be a nice like intro before we get, what, 70,000 people yeah. in or whatever Soft it is. Soft opening, if you will. Yeah. Um, so the game starts at 2.30. I have to get there at 10, 15. So we have all that time to do run throughs. Yeah, it's crazy. Um. And then on Sunday, I'll be back at training camp, not doing social media stuff. I will be essentially calling the game, calling practice. Like an announcer? Yeah. Saying what? Like, uh, like oh, that was a 20-yard catch by Tyler Lockett, stuff like that? But I'm like, really? Some, so that's what's been, they're like, Who's hey. doing it with you? So the first time I watch. Or you're by yourself? By myself. Because normally, I'm not saying you can't do it by yourself. I'm saying normally announcing t are duos, right? It's like a duo or so, a trio of announcers. I think everyone's been bringing their own thing. So the first time I saw someone do it at practice, it was Andre. He's super cool. He and I will be doing the game together on Saturday. And he was very much like just keeping people up to date, like what's going on. Okay, so now the players are going to do whatever they're doing during practice so that people in the fan stands like know okay. what's happening. But then I've seen uh, Andy, who's also one of the in-game hosts, Andy Dooley. He like 
is actually calling, calling. He's like, okay, this just happened, or that like just happened. four-yard run by Rashad Penny. Yeah, pretty much. Huh. So, but I will have, like, my, uh, the entertainment team there, mm-hmm. and they're going to have to tell me what's happening, and then I'm going to tell everybody else. So why don't they just do it? Because that's not their job. <laughs> they, I literally was, I said something about, they're like, nope, I don't get on the mic. Fred the Mailman said Madden Marie. Oh, man. That'd Madden scores cool. came out. Huh? People are not happy about their Madden scores. Is that one of the videos you guys did, like asking people about their Madden I didn't, scores? But the social team uh, did. That's cool. It was fun. Um, oh, also, Seafair is this weekend, which means it's going to be a pretty busy weekend, according to Coma Swifty. Oh, is it going to be a hard time for me to get to Renton on Sunday? No, you should be fine. I think if you go north, yeah. hop on I 5 and then go south. I actually got my script already, and I didn't look at it. Well, you got a couple days. Yeah. I can't tell what that emote is that Eats and Tweets put in there. Boats. Oh, it's boats. Okay. You're going opposite of traffic according to Jordan and Puyallup. Okay. And the Blue Angels don't fly until three, apparently. Oh, are they going to fly over the VMAC? I don't know. Oh, shoot. Well, they're pra- they start practicing today at noon. Oh, my God. Let's see. I got one, two, three. What are you counting? Four things I have to do at the game. Is it like between each quarter, essentially? Wait, so you're there all day and you do four hits? Yeah. Wow. That's pretty cool. Also not a full game. Oh, true, true, true. And they are not closing I-90 this year. Oh, yeah, don't they sometimes close the bridge because people end up watching the planes and crash? Uh, For those who are outside of the Seattle area, Seafair is a weeks-long event. I think it's technically two weeks, Mm -hmm. definitely over one. Um, But the main part of it is the Blue Angel flyover. There's also uh, hydroplane races, those Those cool boats that you see. Those race on the lake, and then people just drink on the lake and and hang out Mm -hmm. and flash their boobs, stuff like that. We got our... uh, we got boobs flashed to us when we were on a boat, oh. when we were throwing out those not your father's root beers. That day was rough because it was like cold. Remember, it, it was, was a little chilly. And we're on the boat, but the people were still in bikinis, boobs out, drinking beers. Um, Robbie and Everett, happy early birthday! Oh, happy! Wait, there was also someone else in here. I know Robbie and Everett, and someone else is celebrating a birthday tomorrow, and said the only they told their husband the only acceptable birthday song birthday is this one. Mighty Minnie, there you go. And Mikey. Oh my God. What was nine months before this? Christmas? So we have three birthdays tomorrow, uh, all tomorrow? Mighty Minnie, Mikey, and who was the other one? I Robbie's Robbie was. Robbie uh, Vex725 said Log Boom is probably going to be crazy this year. I am. It's interesting because like this oh, is tomorrow's the year that, Elvis's birthday too. I just realized. Oh yeah. This is the year that everyone basically like showed that they f- forgot how to act in public. Mm. So something like the log boom with a bunch of boats being tied up together should be wild. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Martha said the original birthday song needs to be canceled. I agree. Let's throw it in the garbage. Throw it in the garbage. You know, what's funny. I've heard, um, even at my birthday, actually, my parents threw a birthday party for me when I was in New Jersey. And after celebrating birthdays with this song, because it's not, we don't sing that way at my birth, my family birthday party. Yes, you we did. Sing the, I was there. No, we don't. I'm kidding. We, uh, we sing the normal boring ass happy birthday song and I can't hear that song anymore. It doesn't make sense. Like, why wouldn't you guys sing that one? Uh, cause we don't have all the instruments at our disposal. Yeah, but you guys disposal. could sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. No. My parents that. would have been so confused if that started happening at your birthday. <laughs> they would have been. Yeah, it's slow and sad. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday. Like no to you. you would think people would speed it up so we get the cake. It's, we need Okay, and maybe with the instruments and the accent it's not going to work, but I think we do need uh, maybe a politician, maybe the next president has to say this is the new official birthday song. And it's like upbeat. I don't know. Things I'll do when I'm president. Pharrell produced it. Something like that. Holly Berry said, I think people sing it low because they're embarrassed to lead it. It depends where I am. If it's like, I'll be the obnoxious person. You don't say. 
That's such a crazy admission, That's right. Carla Marie. Lisa was at Radio City this weekend, and on the Rocks cocktails, they have them there at Radio nice. City Music Hall. And a good birthday song remix, I think, is needed. How long have we been singing that stupid ass birthday song? Like, what were people singing in, in the the colonial days on birthdays? Was it the same boring song? No, they weren't singing. They were just happy to make it another year, but not get it dying of dysentery. Jordy Matthews said, "At least a hundred years." Like, did it shoot to prominence after Marilyn Monroe sung it? The JFK? That wasn't the same song. Happy birthday released 2010. What? That's not true. 1893. 1893, the, the original song, Happy okay, Birthday wait, song came the out? The song's melody originated from a school teacher's greeting song titled Good Morning to All, composed by American sisters Mildred and Patty Hill in 1893. How did we hear that song? Although this... Accreditation has been questioned. The first time the combination of the happy birthday to your lyrics melody appeared was in 1912. For your grandpa's birthday. Yeah. Allegedly. We don't know exactly, but around that time, my grandfather was born. I just play Luke's It's Your Birthday song for everyone. Luke Bryan? I don't know that song. Hmm. Wait. Well, it's not the song. The title of the song is Happy Birthday to You. Happy birthday to Okay, it's like buddy. You. Bye, buddy. Hope Bye, you. buddy. Hope you find your dad. Um, And shout out to New Jersey because it's oh, apparently... Uncle Luke. <laughs> it's apparently uh, super, super hot there. Because Andrea Michelle, who does all of our photos, mm -hmm. she said, why is New Jersey so damn hot? She's there for a wedding. And I said, humidity. She said, my Lord, I hope I don't die in this dress. Uh, also, I should have known it was an Uncle Luke song with a screen name like Becky from Miami. They love them some Uncle Luke in Miami. Who's Uncle Luke? The rapper and Never. producer. New, news to me. Shout out Uncle Luke. I'm in, I'm in Miami too. Drake song. Oh, yeah. What song is that? I hear it. <laughs> in my head. Wait. That's the motto. Uh, it's yeah. motto. Yeah. Wow, look at me. I just played a new game. What is this called? I say a lyric and you have to tell me what it's from. Okay, which we played on the on our show. Our radio show. Remember, I we did, the, or maybe we did it in the podcast we did after the show, maybe. where I wanted to start a game where if I start singing oh, words, yeah. I'm not singing them, I say them. Can you finish it? And we've talked about that here, where there's oftentimes like a word that in your brain triggers. Oh yeah, we a played song. that game. Yeah, we but did, that's we've done that. It's very open to interpretation, so it's hard. But the one that I did for you was, I said today is going to be the day. Yeah, Oasis. No, you you have to keep going. But they'll never throw it back to you. What is it? What is it? Today is gonna be the day. What's the actual lyric that I'm there? gonna throw? <laughs> Whoa! Jordy Matthews has been sitting outside in 90 degree weather in New upstate New York this whole time, For getting some color. Today is gonna be the day that they're gonna throw it back to uh, you. I was right. And by now, you should have somehow realized. What you got to do? What you got to do? I don't believe that anybody feels the way I do about you now. And then and backbeat. What does backbeat mean? I don't know, but I think now that there's two things that indicate the show is over. One, Carla Marie starts playing with cats on the screen. And two is Carla Marie starts singing. So we've done the show, by the way, Carla Marie, for an hour and a half almost today. That's why it helps that we had Scary here carrying some of that load. Yeah, we should have a guest more often. I love having guests, and I do. I do want to make sure I'm working on a a different screen. What? Go ahead. I'm working on a different screen that will indicate when we want more phone calls, because we did figure out a way to get Google Voice to start working again. For whatever reason, yeah, yeah. for a while it just like crapped out. So uh, we are hoping, but let's let's try it Monday. We'll have like, you know, a topic that we would have brought to the radio back in the day to get callers on and a opinions. phone burner, if you will. Maybe. See, phone burner, phone burners end up being like the cheap ones. What are you watching on Netflix? Which is what I'm about to tell you. I finished. It's a limited series on Netflix called Keep Breathing. Also, the type where I, it's also known as Breathe, I believe, if you look it up on IMDb. Mm -hmm. And it's just a limited series. It's six episodes. I loved it. I know. I think Sam and Danielle watched it, and they like they said they wanted more. Yeah, I also wanted more. That's what shows do to you. But it's very, very polarizing um, because it's not just a survival show, which is what people thought it was going to be, like mm -hmm. a, a like the hatchet or the river. Yeah, there's there's a lot about like 
growing as a person and stuff in it. And there's a lot of flashbacks and people didn't love that. But I found out that someone we know's boyfriend is actually starring in the show. And maybe we can get him on. Who's that? Davey Tats. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. I forgot about that. I literally told you. You I met them both. Well, I met Dave a long time ago. ago. You Um, worked with him. Yeah, really good friend of mine. And then I was visiting a friend in L.A. He lives in L.A. now, too. And I guess my friend lives near one of like the super famous trails that people go up to. Maybe the one to the Hollywood sign. I don't know. And uh, he was there with his with his partner. Yeah, so uh, he plays the dad, but he has obviously a lot of prosthetic makeup on. So maybe we'll get him on. All right. So everyone's job is to go watch Keep Breathing and, and report back and let me know what you think. As someone who gets major anxiety watching shows, I I was able to get through this. I'll say that. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with us. Carla Marie, good luck this weekend with your two big broadcasting debuts. Are you coming to the mock game? I think so. Well, can, I I go to, some- can I go to training camp? Yeah, what? Oh, you want to come when I'm calling this game? Oh, wait, no, I'm going to be going on a hike. Anyway. Well, you can come. I got to go on the ninth. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys very much for hanging out with us. We appreciate you. We will be back on Monday. And uh, make sure you're ready to call us on Monday. We're going to make sure that we have the phone lines ready to roll. Anything else, Carla Marie? Um, that would be it, sir. All right. Peace out, Cub Scouts. Peace. You look great.